Hi, folks. Uh, I'm here today with Steve Dake uh, to talk to you about Istio Simplified. My name is Louis Ryan. Uh, I work for Google on Istio, uh, and I've been with the project since the very beginning. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit of an architectural talk, and then Steve will introduce himself, uh, run you through a demo, and then we'll talk a little bit about some other things at the end, and then do Q&A. Um, so the talk today is about uh, Istio Simplified and all the things that we've been doing over the course of the last year to make Istio a simpler product for you to install, upgrade, administer, and use. Uh, we've had a lot of feedback about Istio and its, its usability, uh, and particularly about what it takes for administrators to, make, administrators to maintain it. And so this talk is mostly focused on uh, what it takes to set up, run, uh, deploy, and do some critical administrative functions with Istio. And then a little bit about what is on the roadmap and how we look to make things even simpler going forward. <clears throat> so when we first built Istio, uh, we built it very much adhering to kind of strict principles of microservices. Right? You, th you think about a system, you think about each of the important kind of independent functional parts of that system. Uh, and then you design a service uh, that represents that kind of clear functional role. Um, and so this is a picture of what Istio looked like in the 1.4 release. Uh, and you'll notice that we have several different components. Uh, on the right-hand side, you have the components that run in the Istio system namespace and form part of the control plane uh, and also served as ingress and egress proxies. Uh, and on the left-hand side, we show you kind of what typically runs on a node and a pod. Um, right. And so you can see that there's, there's lots of different things running as independent components in the system. Uh, and this would make sense, uh, particularly if uh, separate teams were running these components in production. Right? One of the, the principles of microservices is trying to promote team agility. What they mean there by team, though, isn't necessarily the team that develops that component. They, they mean the team that develops, deploys, and runs that component in production. Um, and so this is an example of where you know that we probably had uh, some misalignment between expectations of what we did as developers of Istio and what you as administrators of Istio would do, because as administrators of Istio, right, typically you know it's a small team and you don't really care about the independent components, right, the independent functional components of Istio. You want to deploy Istio, you want to run Istio, you want to upgrade Istio, and anything that gets in the way of that. Uh, is tax for you. So we wanted to make sure that you know we weren't just shipping your orchard uh, and really think about you know how we package up these components, what are the steps that we make you go through to roll out critical uh, you know new features or cross-cutting features and also roll out releases of Istio. And so you know this is probably a pretty good example of you know where we over pivoted in the early days of the project on thinking that a lot of cases, Istio would be run as kind of a managed service with different teams responsible for these different functional components. <clears throat> That's still true in many cases, um, but it's not true in the majority of cases. In the majority of cases, we find that there's a, a relatively small team or just one person responsible for rolling out Istio into production and maintaining it. And so anything that makes their life easier is probably a, a good thing. We, we had a lot of feedback. and. You know, we really have to think about designing for the user. Uh, this is a, a, a pretty famous picture of uh, by Rube Goldberg uh, showing, you know, that you know there's obviously a lot of inherent complexity in what is a pretty simple operation, right? Uh, you want to be able to wipe your mustache after you've had some soup, um, and complexity that's presented to the user is complexity that needs to be understood and justified. Right. Uh, we often refer to this as cognitive load, and it's kind of ironic that this is sitting on his head. Um, but as an admin, right, you don't really want to think about, well, I have to deploy Pilot, and then I have to run the updated Citadel, and then I have to roll out the pods, and then I have to do all these types of things. Right? That's, a, that's a lot of implementation detail uh, that shouldn't really be presented to the user. Right? It should be hidden. Um, and so you know, it was just. For many users, this was too many moving parts to think about. Uh, and you know, why would they have to care about this separation? Right? So this is, this is an example where uh, you know, 
well, microservices are great and they are in many ways the, the future of technology, it's not necessarily appropriate that everything be microservices, right? And it has to do not just with the development model, but also with the release and maintenance model of those components in production, uh, which is very often why you see package solutions or package software uh, package lots and lots of logically independent features into single binaries uh, in order to make them easier to maintain rollout because the administrators or users don't have to think about those units separately, even though they actually provide independent functions. Uh, so anyway, this, this was a case where perhaps we had over pivoted on you know, trying to accommodate one potential audience of the solution and hadn't redesigned for what has ultimately turned out to be the primary user. Um, so, you know, like all good projects, we had better learn from our mistakes. And so let's talk a little bit about what we've done uh, over the last year to make this a lot better. Um, so here we have the same diagram, right? All the different components. Um, and I'm gonna talk you through the, all the different transitions that we've made uh, and kind of the rationale for why we did what we did. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Um, probably the first uh, big simplification that we made to Istio, and this was done back in 2019, uh, was to transition away from using Mixer as the primary means of feeding telemetry and implementing policy uh, and removing that from the system and actually just pushing all that capability into the Envoy sidecar and gateways. Uh, this was done not just as a kind of control plane simplification, but also as a reason uh, for performance reasons because it made the system considerably more efficient. All right, so that went away. Um, well, what was next? Well, we, you know, have this component called Galley, which was designed to ingest configuration from different sources and, and feed it into Pilot and, and Mixer at the time, uh, to, which would then actually provide the control plane functionality to the data. So this was just really a configuration ingestion for, uh, abstraction. Uh, and we have just basically flattened that capability now into Pilot. Um, OK, so now we're making some pretty good progress. Uh, well. The next thing to look at was <coughs> removing the injector. So the injector was uh, a component, and its job was uh, to act as an admission controller for pods. It rewrote the pod specs to inject the agent and sidecar uh, so that we could you know, do the service mesh things. Um, it doesn't receive a lot of traffic. Um, and so one of the things that you consider when you merge services is, you know, does the traffic pattern of one service represent a production risk to the, the, the deployment of another service that you might merge it with? And given that the sidecar injector didn't really do a lot in terms of resource consumption uh, or its traffic pattern, it was generally considered pretty safe to just merge that on back into pilot. Uh, so we did that. Uh, so we're getting fairly sparse at this point. Uh, the next major thing is we have these two components, uh, the node agent and Citadel. Uh, and they kind of acted in concert to make sure that we provided uh, TLS certificates to the sidecar so we could enable mutual TLS between the pods. Uh, Citadel is a certificate authority, and the node agent was a way of ensuring that we could securely deliver the certificate and the private key to the working pod without exposing the private key to the network. Right? It was a pretty important feature for you know, real security hardening, right? You don't want private keys going on the wire. Uh, and Citadel would be the thing that would sign uh, the certificates. Well, we can get rid of the node agent and just simply uh, flatten that behavior into what we called at the time pilot agent. Um, pilot agent now just basically performs the same task. When pilot agent starts up, it generates a private key. Uh, it negotiates with Citadel and then makes that private key and certificate available to the sidecar. Um, that also doesn't represent a huge amount of traffic, but this was probably the, the, the biggest decision that we debated about was whether we could reasonably move Citadel into pilot as well. And this was much less a discussion about whether uh, flattening the component into a monolith represented a productionization risk from a performance or resource consumption standpoint but much more about was this an appropriate separation of security roles. Um, Citadel is Istio's built-in certificate authority. Um, and most of the conversations we've had with customers are, have been about integrations with third-party certificate authorities, right? 
uh, a lot of enterprises, big enterprises in particular, or very security conscious ones, tend to run their own CA infrastructure and wanted to make sure uh, that it was their certificates or certificates derived from their CA that were being used in the mesh to identify workloads. And this was mostly for integration cases, particularly where things within the mesh might talk to other services that had certificates issued by the same authority. So from this perspective, right, the, the default Citadel out of the box, the one that generates a self-signed certificate root and authority, um, seems pretty safe to merge. And so what we did, uh, and we did it with most of those components, is when we do a merge, if there's still a functional reason, reason to allow uh, for a separation, we make sure that the, the API contract that was maintained between the components is still represented in the system, right? And so pilot agent, while it talks to pilot, or as you'll see in the later slides, we kind of rename some of these things, talks to the certificate authority running in pilot, it can also be integrated with other certificate authorities using a variety of industry standard or uh, kind of Istio standardized APIs to make sure that we can still support those important integration cases. Right. The other common principle of microservices is that you know, service implementations should be swappable right, and they should have well-defined API boundaries. And while we have done a significant amount of merging components into a monolith, we've been very careful to maintain those same API boundaries. Um, the other two components that remain in Istio system having performed this merge are the ingress and egress proxies. These do actually have radically different data uh, and resource consumption uh, patterns compared to pilot and would actually represent a production risk. Uh, also, they're implemented by Envoy and trying to put Go and C++ in the same binary is probably not something any reasonable human should try and do. Um, so this, this is basically what we settled on. Uh, we now have a single converged binary. Uh, we call it Istio D. It is the unified control plane for uh, the mesh as a whole. We still have an egress, an ingress proxy to serve those functions in Istio system. And then within the pod, we still have what we now call Istio agent and the Envoy sidecar. Uh, and over time, we may look at ways actually of eliminating the agent and just flattening some of its behavior into the sidecar. Uh, the, its primary functions today are to act as a process lifecycle controller for Envoy, right? To make sure it starts up, it gets given the right credentials so we can bootstrap. And get running, and then also, you know, if the envoy crashes, to make sure that the right things happen, um, and also to bootstrap the private key and feed it into the sidecar. Uh, over time, it seems like both of these capabilities could actually be flattened into envoy itself, um, but it would take a little work to do that, and we haven't gotten there yet. <clears throat> so this is why we, you know we kind of refer to this as embracing the monolith. Istod is now a, a pretty monolithic control plane, but if you do need to integrate uh, other features into the system, uh, we do have well-defined extension points to do that, uh, not just for CAs and secrets and things of that nature, um, but with the replacement of Mixer and the migration to WebAssembly, we also have extension points that can be pushed into the data plane for custom capabilities, right? So we still have a lot of that extensibility power that our customers have needed. Um, so now we end up with something that much more reasonably models what most administrators expect to be installed when they run Istio. Um, right? you, you get a control plane thing. Uh, when you want to upgrade the control plane, you update that thing. Um, and so that's where we are. Right? This is pretty significant simplification of the deployment topology. Uh, and, and Steve will talk a little bit more later in the demo about why this simplification has enabled us to add some capability that's pretty useful for people, particularly ones running large systems in production. So this is kind of one basic class of simplification that you know, we have prioritized doing the work. And as of Istio 1.6, this is what you will see. Uh, and this is something we continue to intend working on. But there are other dimensions of simplification that we care about. Uh, and so you know, I wanted to make sure that everybody had a, a, a pretty good idea of you know, what else has been going on. Um, so with the removal of Mixer uh, and, and other changes, um, the number of CRDs in Istio that you actually need to use has gone from about 23 to 13. Um, and 
you know, we do carry over CRDs across upgrade boundaries. So you, if you do run an upgrade, you will see uh, 23 CRDs, but 10 of those are not used, right? They're just there so that we can be safe across upgrade boundaries. Uh, those CRDs represent basic functional behaviors, like I want to run a gateway, uh, I want to route traffic, uh, I want to configure load balancing, I want to add a VM or something not running in Kubernetes to the mesh, um, and I want to define security policies, right? I want to control who can talk to me and what they can say, right? And so we have a CRD for each of these basic functional characteristics. Uh, we no longer have CRDs for each of the kind of extension integrations that used to exist because that was the pattern with Mixer. We don't do that anymore. There is one fairly generic uh, CRD that represents, I want to inject this extension or capability into the system. Um, as we showed before, we now have gone from seven control plane pods to one. Uh, you also get two additional pods in the control plane if you want to run Prometheus and Grafana, um, or you know, if you're using some managed solution for telemetry, then you don't get those things and you get the ingress and egress gateways installed by default. Um, we also had one daemon set, which was the node agent. Uh, then now there's no daemon set installed by default, but if you do enable the CNI option, which is not enabled by default, uh, then you would get a daemon uh, for CNI. We are at this point gonna switch over to a demo. Steve's gonna show you a, a variety of interesting things and I'm gonna let him present this slide. Hi, my name is Stephen Dake. I'm an open source leader at IBM. I've worked at Istio for about three years through three different companies. Uh, Istio is about three years old, so I've been involved with Istio since nearly the beginning of the project. <clears throat> I work as an environments workgroup lead. I'm going to show how to on-ramp an application into Istio as well as upgrade Istio. Uh, so let me start out with deploying. First of all, let me show you uh, that there are no other systems in here, uh, applications in here. In fact, uh, my cluster has been alive for three minutes because I just initialized it. I'm gonna go to this microservices demo, which is made by Google. I'm gonna install the manifest uh, for Kubernetes. So there's Kubernetes, uh, or there's, there's uh, it used to be called the hipster shop and I think it's been renamed. <clears throat> so we'll take a look and see what happens. Uh, get the pause. We need to wait for it to come up. Now we need to get the uh, load balancer service, and that's 192.168.7.228. We can tell that's an external IP. So let me open the browser. 192.168.7.220. And that'll take us to the hipster shop. We can click around. We can add to the cart. We can place an order. Uh, we can, you know, we can do whatever we want here. <clears throat> so the application definitely works. You can keep browsing. Uh, but now, so the application is running on Kubernetes, but there is no Istio. I'm going to install Istio. I'm going to install Istio 165 uh, with the demo profile. The demo profile brings along Grafana. I'm going to show how Grafana works. Um, one of the things Istio installs is an ingress gateway. The ingress gateway is responsible for ingress into the system, into the service mesh. Uh, we can control the level of security in the, with ingress as well as uh, provide multiple applications with ingress versus what you would get with a typical load balancer. So we're waiting now for the add-ons to install. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and get the services in the Istio system namespace. And we see here we've got an external IP of 221. So let me open that up. 192.168.8.7.221. Now there's no application here. Uh, that's not surprising because in order to really get your application to work with Istio, <coughs> you, you have to create a gateway rule and so there's a gateway and a virtual service. Uh, these just tie the, they tie Istio to a uh, load balancer essentially. So I'm going to go ahead and apply these. Now they're applied. Now I should be able to just access it. There it comes up right away. So we can go through and click and whatnot, uh, add to cart, place order. So <clears throat> we've just on ramped our application to a service mesh. Um, you can see though, we've got no uh, 
no sidecars at all. And the sidecar is a proxy. It's a, we use Envoy for our proxy. We've got no sidecars running. And I'm going to show telemetry a little bit. Um, so let me go to that. Uh, I wrote this uh, little shell script, and it's based upon this uh, doc from Istio.io. Essentially, it, it enables Grafana remotely. So <clears throat> I can go to... Uh, let me open another window, actually. I can go to 192, I can go to Grafana, 192.168.7.221.nip.io. Nip.io is a service for let, letting me access uh, systems with... It. Ah, there we go, okay. That was confusing, um, it was recent. So, okay, so I've got my workload dashboard op open. Um, you see there's no services here. Uh, even if I click the, there's no namespace, uh, that's because there's no sidecars. In order to get telemetry, you have to have sidecars installed. So I'm just going to um, uh, I'm going to label the default namespace first to for injection uh, label namespace uh, label namespace default Istio dash injection equals enabled. So that should get us going. Cool. So that label did that. So I'm going to do a rollout uh, reset. I roll out uh, restart. I roll out restart on. I'll, I'll pick uh, add service as a deployment. I'll pick checkout service as a deployment. I'll pick out uh, product catalog service as a deployment. Now the product catalog service is where all the data is stored. Yes, I meant rollout. Thank you. For the help, O U T. Um, roll out, restart deployment. So we just we just uh, restarted several services, but not all of the services of the microserv of the application. So if I do a cuddle git uh, pods on the default namespace, we see some pods are in one of two. That's because they're adding a sidecar. Uh, the other ones are in one of one. But for example, this add service is one in one of two, and this one's one of one. This one's being terminated. So um, while that's terminating, though, I can still access everything just currently. Uh, I continue. I keep browsing. I go to my film camera. I go to my home barista kit, and so on and so forth. So that still works. <coughs> now we see that uh, some of some of the pods have sidecars, some don't. Um, but over here, if we refresh uh, our Grafana uh, namespace default, any of the things I reset, so as or, or uh, restarted at service, checkout service, product catalog, anything that has a sidecar is going to have data attached, is going to have telemetry attached to it. And we use Grafana for telemetry in SEO. You can use whatever you like. It doesn't have to be uh, Grafana. But you see here, it's got a bunch of services, and they're unknown because, uh, well, I'm not sure why they're unknown. Um, the key thing with the unknown, yeah, is, let me pick a different service. Let me pick the product catalog. There we go, product catalog. We see the checkout service is communicating to it with MTLS. The checkout service is communicating to it with MTLS, so on and so forth. Now, back here with the uh, checkout service, uh, there's no MTLS, so it's hard to know what is communicating with it. So um, I'm going to roll the whole deployment. Um, roll out deployment. Roll out restart deployment dash in default and that'll restart everything um <coughs> pause dash in is to system kube cuddle get pods wow so we see some pods initializing here um all of the services are restarting uh in that deployment and while that's happening the online boutique is ready to go like so well, sometimes it's ready to go. If we had a pod disruption budget, it would be ready to go. Uh, but a couple of re, uh, re reloads and we're back back in action. We can add to the cart. Cool thing is over here in telemetry land, uh, back at this, uh, oh, I need to refresh that so Grafana gets new data sources. It's got all the different services. So if like we pick the front end, uh, there's nothing at the front end because we're not going through the front end anymore. Uh, we transition, but we're going like in the email service, we see this MTLS uh, marker. So we've just added MTLS to our services. Uh, <clears throat> from a plain text application to MTLS. So we've, the, the applications that were running encrypted or were running communicating with each other that had a sidecar used MTLS and ones that didn't use plain text. And then um, 
that's how you onboard an application in, into Istio. It's pretty straightforward. But how do you upgrade? So the way we upgrade is Istio Cuddle 166. Um, and we do, uh, we want to set a revision equals B166. And then we want to uh, set the profile equals demo yet again. So this will install Istio 166. Uh, I want to install in there. And I want to learn how to type. And this takes just a moment. Now what this does is this installs Istio 166 uh, side by side with Istio 165. Um, <clears throat> it's going to keep 166 and 165 active. Uh, we're we're going to uh, label the namespace uh, for the default. And we're going to remove the injection. And the reason we're doing this is because we're uh, label namespace default and it label namespace default injection minus. Hello, computer. There we go. Cut up. Okay, so uh, it's due injection. Okay, so <clears throat> we turned off injection. Uh, the other thing we want to do, so I want to show you real quick Istio Cuddle 166 version. We see the data plane has 12 proxies, 12 Envoy proxies connected to 165, three connected to 166. 166 is our new uh, data control plane, and we only have three proxies connected to the data plane. How do we get all those other data planes connected, or the data proxies connect the data plane essentially moved over to our new control plane. This is a common thing that we want to do. So what we do is we uh, label the namespace again, default um, istio.io slash rev slash equals v166. Now that matches the revision I, I set earlier when I d deployed istio. And then uh, I'm going to do a rolling restart of the services. So I'm going to do a kubectl uh, rollout restart deployment oh, that was cool istio system so there's a uh, no I didn't want to do istio system that was not what I wanted I wanted to do default I don't know why I did that so uh, this will be an interesting test of what istio cuddle of what istio does when somebody types the wrong command so oops istio cuddle dash one six six version. Now we see 165 has 12 proxies, 166 has 5 proxies. Uh, as we as we keep pressing the version button, we see the proxies are starting to switch over to 166. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff restarting and whatnot at the moment, so uh, we'll see all the proxies eventually go to 166. Meanwhile, the application is rocking and rolling. I mean, I just threw uh, a wrench in uh, how Istio works as well as how the application works. I did something completely unintended. I typically do CI CD for this, so that's pretty cool. Um, finally, I'm going to get the deployments in the Istio system namespace, and I'm going to delete the Istio D deployment. Group cuddle delete deployment Istio D dash n Istio system. That deleted the Istio D deployment. That was our orig original. Uh, deployment. So we get pause dash in Istio system. We see only Istio DV166 is running. That's what we deployed. Is the application working? That's what matters. Yes, it is. It's working. What about telemetry? What do we got for telemetry? Uh, I see lots of locks there. That's good. Good news. Lots of locks. Okay. Thank you for your time. I hope you have seen uh, how to onboard your application to Istio as well as um, upgrade Istio to new versions. Uh, keep in mind, you can have three or four or ten different versions of the Istio control plane running at once. So it's been a pleasure. Uh, hopefully, next year we'll see you in person. Thank you. Uh, so lastly, you know, I'd like to thank you. Uh, you know, I, I know it's a shame that we can't all be here together in Amsterdam. Uh, I certainly would have loved to be able to go to Amsterdam. It's one of my favorite cities. The last time I came out for KubeCon, I had a great time. Um, but you know, we uh, will do our best, uh, and I look forward to the Q and A. And with that, we have uh, hit Einde, I guess. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. The end, and uh, now we do questions.